the sack, flat on the sack. That's good for you. Oh, it's already. Good morning and welcome to Camp Notes for February 2016. I'm Nathan Wallace Sims, the producer. And this morning, John Chambers has oh, uh, agreed to moderate this program. Eek. He's much closer to the age of people interested in this than I am. So, John, uh, you can much. take it away. Thanks. Okay. Hello, and, and I guess, from what I understand, this is a, a discussion on the concept of legalizing marijuana in the state of Vermont. Um, there's a particular bill that's going through the legislature right now that is dealing with that issue, but we've got questions now whether the bill either goes far enough, whether, whether the bill's been gutted, doesn't have any real meaning anymore. Um, so we have a panel of experts who are going to talk about the particulars of the bill and even the whole concept of why it should be legal, it should not be legal. And from what I gather, the three people on this panel basically all agree that it should be legal. But now the question is, legal in what way? Who regulates it? Who's in charge? how much freedoms the, the individuals have, the whole nine yards, whether it's alcohol, the issues are always the same. It's just a question of personal freedoms, responsibility, um, and where do we go from there? So I think we have a very good panel here, and the less I talk, the better. So we're going to um, go to the far end and we'll introduce each other um, individually, and then I think we'll each have a statement to begin the program, and then we'll begin with that as our basic premise. So well, I'm, Fran, I'm Fran Janik. I'm a uh, uh, Vermont registered patient and a patient advocate and a member of Vermont Homegrown. Uh, we are a community group that has uh, pushed very hard over the last year or so for uh, a bill that uh, originally was written by uh, Senator White and Benning and uh, they did a lot of, lot of work on this and, and uh, we've, been, we've been fighting for a true legalization with uh, uh, basically open licensing and we had asked also for uh, Homegrown uh, which is not in the current bill. I'm Brad Meyerson. I'm an attorney in Manchester, and I'm not. Uh, it's it's hard for me to speak to the minutia about extracts and uh, dispensaries and so on. My overall interest is simply that we need legalization in some form, even in an imperfect form, which is uh, the current version of the Senate Bill S two forty one, which we're going to be talking about today. The prohibition against drugs has failed. Prohibi prohibition against marijuana has failed. I think that any kind of legalization bill that passes this year is enormous progress because it will be the first time in the history of the United States that a legislature, rather than uh, a ballot measure by citizens, would legalize marijuana. So uh, that is my position, and I think it's also important because it reduces the power of law enforcement to conduct illegal searches and to harass people based on possession of smoking of marijuana. My name is Brian Berry. I'm also a medical marijuana patient. I've been a patient about nine years and I guess I've got the opposite opinion. My feeling is that a bad bill is a bad bill and improper legalization is not really the answer, but we'll get to that. Okay. Do you want to start off by talking about the bill itself, or do you want to talk, talk about why we think, in general, marijuana should be legal? Do I have the big... I think we should start broad and then okay. kind of narrow it down to particular, okay, so particular items. Um, once again, let's go, we'll start with you. Why should marijuana be legalized? Let's just go with... Well, goals. first of all, we've been lied to for the last 75 years by our government for non-scientific reasons. Uh, the cannabis plant, we prefer to call it cannabis, not marijuana, because that's the name of the plant. Uh, is uh, not as dangerous uh, to society as even alcohol, tobacco, and pharmaceuticals that uh, people use on a daily basis. Uh, in fact, it does enhance the uh, physical uh, system in each of our each human being through an endocannabinoid system. We each have it in our, in, and we produce a similar chemical, not the same chemical in our bodies. So this is not something that we have to fear. This is not something uh, that is going to over come our communities, and it's something that's really already here. Why do you feel? I, I, I agree with Fran in that we're talking not about a drug, 
but instead about an herb that's been used uh, it, for medicinal and other purposes for thousands of years. It only has been illegal in the United States for about the past hundred years. Uh, 80,000, is it as much as 80,000 Vermonters, I believe, use marijuana on a regular basis. Millions nationwide. The, uh, the prohibition fighting uh, the, the use of marijuana has been, as well as the prohibition against illegal drugs in general, has been a miserable failure. It's cost us terribly in terms of wasted money for law enforcement, wasted money for incarceration. And, and it's time for this to end. Uh, I am very much in favor of legalization. Uh, and one of the discussions that we're going to have and that we've had actually before we went on camera was whether the bill in its current form legalizing marijuana um, as imperfect as it is, ought to move forward, or sure, should it end uh, <clears throat> and have something else be in its place? My feeling is, as I said in my opening statement, anything, anything that legalizes marijuana, even if it's just an ounce, is enormous progress. And you know, when that, if the bill passes the Senate, we have to talk about politics in terms of this bill. It's inescapable because, you know. No bill in its in its original form ever looks the the uh, the same at the end. That's just the nature of the legislative process. So, the bill is going to hopefully pass the Senate. Okay, it got through Senate Judiciary thanks to Senator Sears, which is enormous. Then it's got to go through the House. The Speaker of the House, Shap Smith, isn't wild about legalization. So, what if if we are fortunate enough to have some bill come out of the House? And then there'll be the, the, the House and Senate, they'll have a conference committee to review the bill and make changes. Anything that, God willing, gets to the governor's desk may look very different from even what S-241 is right now. But again, to me, that represents enormous progress. So sort of we like, need to have it. It's sort of like the Bill Clinton or Obama approaches is some progress is better than no progress, even if it's not. Well, I just it think it's the reality of the no, situation. No, I understand yeah. I'm just saying that yeah. in general, yeah. in, as opposed to why a, a big bomb in the middle makes some just change everything radically right. really fast? Right. And this is this is where, uh, and this is where Brian and I differ well, no, because fine. Uh, I, you know, Brian, I, I know what Brian's position is. I'll let him say it, but I think that some kind of legalization bill is better than none at all. Okay. I would have thought I would feel that way too. This is something I've been very. I, I'm going to be 69 years old in two weeks. I've never had a beer in my life. When I turned 16, my father said, if you want to smoke a drink, do it at home, which I guess would actually get you put in jail now as a parent, but right. back then it was okay. I had never liked the taste of it. I started smoking pot. Actually, it was the first joint I ever got, I got from a policeman. Now, I was sitting in a restaurant. They used to come in at closing time, and some of them had drinks, some of them had something to eat. The good old days. And they asked me, yep, <laughs> uh, Sergeant Arnold Odesky from the Cranston Police Department. I'll never forget it. He said, you know, have a drink. I said, no, nah, I'm not 21. He said, well, we don't care. I said, I don't like it. I don't drink. He says, well, you must smoke pot then. I said, never tried it. And he pulled a joint out and gave it to me. In 1978, President Carter, I still remember it, standing up as president saying, Marijuana should be rescheduled and it should be decriminalized. Here we are, many years later, in the same boat. Um, but a bad bill is a bad bill. This does not really legalize marijuana. It eliminates cr some, some criminal penalties. It makes harsher penalties. Maybe we'd end up with a different bill, but this is the bill that I have to look at and I have to say, which is not really acceptable to patients. So let's, let's for, well, we can get into that so later. Let's, yeah. just, let's just play devil's advocate for one second. Do we agree that marijuana can be misused? Is there a possibility? We all, we're all promoting it, and I think we're all in agreement that it should be legal. But is there one of the reasons why there's the other side would say, well, we don't want to legalize it because it can be misused. Do we agree that it can be misused? How? Yeah, yeah. what's the definition yeah, of misuse? I, okay, let's say you, you drink, you drink uh, whiskey all day long. I mean, a shot of wine is, is great. You drink wine all day long, you get it's not probably not very good for you. So I'm just saying, it's, it, it, I, it, it, people who are, who are trying to stop these progress in the use of marijuana, I think there was come with that sort of argument. I, I, I think that that has to do with, uh, with the argument that, that if we legalize marijuana in Vermont, kids are just going to 
be you know dropping on the sidewalk because they'll be right, but smoking can we, or just can, can we just I, at least address that? That's all. I'm yeah, I, I mean, I think as Senator Benning, one of the sponsors of this bill, has pointed out, this if if we legalize marijuana in Vermont, it is not going to result in this explosion of usage. Why? Because eighty thousand Vermonters are using a, an illegal substance anyway. Okay, the, the prohibitionists say, well, if we legalize it, then even more kids are going to be using it. Guess what? Kids are smoking anyway, even though it's illegal. They're drinking anyway, they're drinking even though you can't drink ever. until no, you're 21. No, I, no, I understand. Uh, can, it be no, I understand. Can, can it be misused? Perhaps by, uh, by younger people, but there are controls in the bill for that. I think that one of the things that was interesting when we were sitting in the hearing rooms, because uh, <coughs> Brian and I have spent a lot of time in the Senate hearings, uh, was that the uh, young man who was there uh, uh, with his mother who was doing a talk about against, against cannabis uh, spoke out and said yeah. that he uh, could uh, n not get marijuana because it wasn't regulated. And then a young lady in the back stood up and said the exact opposite. And what Joe Benning said was that that young man's comments were the first time he'd ever heard that. The young lady was basically telling him what he had heard from many teenagers is that because it's unregulated, it's much easier to get than alcohol. So, uh, you know, th that was a college age young woman, 17, who, who was in there monitoring it. And Senator White actually uh, brought her to the forefront to talk about it. So you, you've got a completely unregulated market now. You're not keeping anyone from it if they really want to. It's a plant, right. you can grow it. it, it they call it weed for a reason because it does grow. It doesn't grow perfectly, but sure. it can grow, okay? And uh, so the regulation of it will keep it away from children. We, we are not advocating for anybody under 21 okay. having legal access at this time. Let me make that clear. This is what I'm trying to get out Yeah, no, we're not doing that. We want, you know, I, I got a 12-year-old nephew and I sat him down and told him about alcohol and told him about cannabis and I was honest with him and told him not to do anything until he was of age. Right. So uh, we're not doing that. Yeah. What we're saying is let's give it to the people that already have it, let them grow it at home, let them not have to spend that money that they're spending now on that two, four, three, four hundred dollar an ounce, they can grow their own, and they can spend that money on something else in their household. Uh, let that small business person come forward out of the woods, take the take these plants out of the woods, put them in in a grow in uh, in a backyard or in a secured grow indoors, or put a fence around it if you have to, but let that person do so without penalty. Okay, so let's let's, let's go to some of the positives. If you don't mind me bringing up, you two are patients to use cannabis. Yes. For medicinal reasons, yes. You have. Can you mind ex just talking about your issue a little bit? Not at all. I, I, I'm very fortunate. I have an artificial hip that I've had since I was 19. Um, I'm 59. Uh, I have uh, sciatica. I have a number of other conditions, uh, chronic pain conditions that occur in my back, disc problems, and I have some uh, some uh, issues that are not on the list. For instance, I have glaucoma. So if I only had glaucoma. I wouldn't be allowed to be a patient in Vermont, even though it does help my glaucoma. My doctors have told me this. Right. So again, we have restrictive. Uh, one of the reasons I got into this was to help uh, about two thirds of the people that are using medicinally right now that can't get a card, that are using illegally per se, okay, uh, to get access to it. Uh, so that's what we're trying to do. But again, we're trying to keep it local. We're trying to keep that money local so it doesn't go out of the local community. It's already there. We had 60 people in the first meeting in Brattleboro, Vermont. Uh, BTV covered it. And Senator White was there. Senator Balint was there. Uh, and they saw, it, basically. They, people are sitting in the back of the room saying, please don't take away my small income that's additional to my full-time job that I need so I can get those Christmas gifts for the kids, or I can pay my taxes. And a lot of people are paying their taxes with this money right now. If you give it to those 10 corporations up north, or you give it to just limited licenses, I don't care who it is, okay, you're gonna take that away. And you, if you're gonna make those people criminals, we're gonna have increased judiciary costs, I would think. Yeah, we'll get that. And yep. Just, but there's no reason to just give us a sense why you use it. Um, I've, my back, I've broken my back twice. Um, I've. I use a, a, a concentrated oil. I take a pill every day. Um, it's got. It's a, enabled me to stand up. I mean, anybody who knows me, five years ago, I was bent over, and had a horrible time. It's been a as a pain I, reliever or as, as I, 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 a total pain relief. I, I'm now pain free. 
Um, Reduces without, inflammation. Without opioids. Oh, okay. it, um, that's an important point. Right, that's what I'm trying to Yeah, without to opioids. Yeah. Marijuana, or excuse me, cannabis is an herb, okay? Uh, so it to, to be able to uh, promote its medicinal qualities uh, in terms of uh, reducing pain, promoting you know physical flexibility, instead of addictive opioids, which are manufactured mm. by the far, the uh, touch, touch uh, that in a pharmaceutical right. industry, is a certainly a good thing. Right. I should mention also that I did come off opioid pain meds, and uh, I, as a result of using cannabis, I actually drink less, even though I enjoy a beer now right. and then. Right. Yeah. Well, I, I, I'm not. I won't name names or where I get this information from, but. You know, there's a huge heroin problem in, in this town right now. I guess whole, no, a lot of areas. Mm -hmm. Some of the theories is because uh, one of those oxycotton, oxycotin, one of those drugs that they give you when you have anything. Oxycotin. Yeah. 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 yeah, oxycodone or oxycotton. Yeah, yeah. you get hooked on those. Yeah. Yes. And from what I understand, heroin's now cheaper than that stuff. Correct. Yes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we had we had 10 ODs in Bennington last week. Yeah, yeah well, you cannot. Oh, I, now, I don't even mean to put the two in the. I don't want to talk about cannabis yeah. and heroin. Let, let, me, let yeah. me point out, you give me a moment here to point right. out the fact that you cannot overdose on cannabis. Okay, it does not affect your central perfusion or your respiratory rate, so you will not overdose on this. Uh, you can get to the point where it's uncomfortable if right. you had too much oil, uh, and usually it, you step up doses in cancer patients and that kind of a thing, so it's not to that point, right. but you will not overdose. Okay, yeah, because uh, anyways, the heroin issue that we have, which is huge right now, I think can be related to um, pharmaceutical drugs, not Cannabis. And, and yeah. cannabis, mm -hmm. cannabis, quite frankly, has been found to help heroin addicts come off that deadly drug. Yeah. Can, can I just jump in for one second? Because this is a very common argument that's made by the prohibitionists right. and that's law right. enforcement, that marijuana is somehow a gateway drug, that if you use it, uh, it's going to lead you to stronger drugs. I mean, that's laughable. First of all, it, it, you know, there's no medical proof for that. Um, that's like saying that if, if, if you drink alcohol, you're going to be an alcoholic. That's just scare tactics. That's, you know, again, that's right. typical law enforcement scare tactics, misinformation to try to, you know, manipulate the debate. Right. But I think, I think there's evidence now to show that pharmaceutical drugs are the actual gateway drugs. Absolutely. That, that's and alcohol. Right. Yeah. Right. That's the point I'm making. Yeah. I could be wrong, right. but I'm just yeah. saying no, that's you're correct. correct. I mean, if it, there is a gateway drug, it would be the first drug that you took. And for most people I've talked with, that's alcohol. Right. Actually, for me, that was in my, when I had my hip operated on and re being replaced, I woke up high on morphine. So there you yeah. go. <laughs> Speaking of, my grandmother had a still when she, this is uh, yeah. in 1920. She used to give alcohol to the policeman in yeah. Cambridge, Mass. Oh, yeah. so good old days. Yeah. I, I think, <laughs> you know, I think that this is an important point. To yeah. kind of go back to what we were talking about earlier, um, you know, if if there, if people, be, be, before prohibition ended, during the prohibition era, people were making their own alcohol. Right. Okay, that's right. Uh, you know, that's fine, but sometimes you know we you would have moonshine that would kill people, and it was unregulated. Happened All right, went into it the heroin. All right, did it? Someone uh, died. Oh boy. So I, I think there's an analogy with, uh, you know, while people should be allowed to grow marijuana for their own use, um, you know, marijuana can be regulated and sold in the same way that alcohol is, which is a sort of a check on the purity of it, although these gentlemen would know more about that than me. I, I, I think it can be treated just as alcohol in terms of how it's, how we it's don't sold. We don't test, let me go to the, 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 the spinach theory, okay? <laughs> we don't test spinach, we don't, and that can be deadly. We don't test, uh, uh, our farmer, would, Eli, Emily, would tell us that we don't test uh, any of the vegetables that she sells or any of the meats in the way that they want to test cannabis right now. And what they want to do is they wanted to take it to a central location, test it, and then send it back to you. And that's just simply not good for the plant. And like Emily that's said, absurd. and like Emily said, um, uh, there, what are we going to do? We're not going to put bad things in our, in our homegrown cannabis. We're not going to, for ourselves, or if we're selling to our neighbors or anything like that, if you were doing that, you wouldn't do it. You're not going to make up a fresh batch of something to throw in there. You're going to have a nice, pure product. You're not going to use uh, harsh chemicals. The big grows, the big industrial grows that they're planting here with this bill. Well, if you've got a million dollar crop and you get uh, all of a sudden you get bugs, you've got to get rid of them or you've lost that crop. Now, if I got a plant and it's got bugs, it goes. So I toss it and I start another one. Okay, and it's just a, uh, just a small loss. So the small artisanal grow 
will beat out for quality. It'll be make the Vermont brand much better, and it, it just just like craft beer. Just even yeah yeah. It's the difference between a heady heady topper and a, and a Budweiser, okay. <laughs> and the, and okay. your factory your factory All grown right. cannabis is grown on a timeline. And your artisanal grow is when the plant's ready, we pick it. We don't pick every tomato. Sorry, Dick Sears, I'm using the tomato <laughs> argument. But we don't pick every tomato at once. We are picking the tomatoes as they are ripe. And that's what counts here. All right, well, let's, let's get into the more contentious um, thought now. The actual bill itself. Um, you two worked on trying to pass this bill, I mean, personally, right? The original yes. bill. It was crafted. The, uh, yes. So and I testified in front of Senate Judiciary, okay. and I've lobbied the senators. Brad's oh, been there all along. All right, so how do we want to approach this? Uh, you, wanna, uh, you, you guys want to talk about the original bill, how you thought it was going to be presented, and then what's happening now? Do you want to go with that? Brian? Go that route. Okay. Um, originally, what we had what we had hoped for, and what we had written, been written up, was something that gave basically everybody the right to grow. Everybody would be able to grow a small plot of their own pot. There was no limit. Whatever you had, you could travel around with an ounce. It had to be con contained, locked up. But you could keep what you grew in your house. If you grew more than a pound, you know, whatever it was. Some people will use more than other people. If you're doing concentrates, if you're making cookies, depending on what you're doing, everyone will get a different yield from plants. Uh, pretty much all agricultural pro products are measured by square foot or by acres. Since these would be small plots, they'd be measured by the square foot. Um, if you wanted to be a commercial grower, you could buy a, another license. They'd be a dollar a square foot in 100 foot square foot increments. We felt limiting it to probably to 500 square feet for a grower. So there would be an unlimited number of small growers throughout the state. The money would be kept locally. Whatever money they get gets spent locally to the local general stores, the local hardware stores, the local car dealer, whatever. If we go with 10 large commercial grows, which is what is proposed, the money is going to go to 10 big corporations, um, none of which is in this bill anyway, so other than the 10 big commercial grows. And that's really about what was in the f original bill, and none of which is in this bill, so I'm not sure how to compare them. Yeah. Um, <laughs> It's well, apples and oranges. I mean, basically, what this bill does, and Dick Sears says it, to be totally honest, in terms of civil and criminal penalties, the only thing I am willing to consider is removing the civil penalties for the personal possession of one ounce or less of marijuana for those over 21. And that's what this bill does. But it's still progress. I mean, you know, it's this. What's the saying? It, you're letting the perfect be the enemy of the good. If any legalization bill in any form passes, it's enormous progress. It's historic. Okay, the first time in the United, history of the United States that a legislature has legalized possession of marijuana. Okay, and what if we have a Republican governor? If you say, well, no, we want the, we don't like the bill. The bill is dead because of objections from from advocates. You know what if Phil Scott gets to be governor? Guess what? He's not going to sign a legalization bill, no matter how much energy or uh, there is. My feeling is I you know I agree with you guys. I think that this bill could be a hell of a lot better. I think that people should be able to grow. I think that there shouldn't be any penalties. I think that there should be you know local growers and distributors, just as if it were craft beer. Mm -hmm. But I think that the objective that we have some form of legalization is that's most important in whatever form. The and as perfect as this bill is, it's better than what we got right no, now. The, the, the only argument I'll give you on that one is what we've dealt with and the reason that we're both sitting here, part, part, partially why right, we're both sitting here, I think Brian would agree with me, is the, the medical program <clears throat> has failed so many people because it was legislated so tightly Yes. And it hadn't changed, and it hasn't changed. And getting those changes when something is set in cement is a lot more difficult than getting it right if we can the first time. So what we're asking, if any of you senators are listening to us now, is please, please go back to the original design that, that Senator White and Senator Benning crafted. Please go back to those values 
please allow Vermonters open licensing and homegrown. Thank you. Yeah, and I don't know the real issue per se. I'm not. A, I, I haven't even read the bill, so I'm just talking through my hat. But the corporate issue versus the local issue, I think, would be a big deal. Um, how do you fight a corporation? A corporation decides to make laws, and, and you decide to sue a corporation. They, they're always going to be able, out, be able to outspend you. Yeah. They're so already doing it. Yeah. yeah. So we we didn't have any money. We were doing this with no money. By no, the way. Right, <laughs> right. So you know this, the use of cannabis in a sense can be symbolic to, for a much bigger. You know, we just lost another hardware store. I mean, not, I don't think Home Depot put them out of business, <laughs> but it certainly didn't help. Um, so intellectually, yeah, I think that's that that argument should always be done with vim and vigor. The other side of the coin is progress is progress. <laughs> progress is progress, but I I just. I, I hate to see it done with with the same attitude that that is bad. I mean, the, the purpose of legalizing is because it's not bad, and this this, this leaves all the stigmas attached to it. Still. Yes. Um, and once Department of Public Safety gets this, there's no going back. Well, I That's, think we, we've seen this from I, the medical program. You've hit upon something important. A big mistake was putting the Department of Public Safety. You know, the, Mark the arm of law yeah. enforcement in charge of dispensaries. Our Brian was there. Our bill, we had a separate, we, we yeah, set it up. It should be the Department of Health or some other regulatory body. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, they have fought legalization tooth and nail. Mm -hmm. And there have been problems that I've read about uh, in terms of uh, medical dispensaries. Yeah. That, that that Department of Public Safety, you know, th they do the rule writing and everything yeah. else. They make it virtually impossible for people to get medicinal marijuana. And that's Th wrong. There's a catch-22 in it right now. Mm -hmm. If you get, uh, if your doctor won't sign, and many of them won't, um, uh, or uh, you can go to a three-person panel, but you have to be uh, actually uh, rejected first and refused, and then you have seven days to appeal. And many that's people don't even know that you can get an appeal to the three-doctor panel that exists. So there's a, that they kept that catch-22. I mean, uh, I had a conversation with Lindsay Wells a year or so ago, and she said, my God, we're beyond our five-year projection. How can we do this? And at one point, we were limited to 1,000 patients. And, and so this whole thing hasn't progressed really at all. You get two ounces per patient from a dispensary, and if you need three or four, like my friend Ruth Reich, who is a cancer survivor and has head injury, uh, she can't get it, and if she can't afford it, she can't have it because insurance doesn't cover it. So really, we're trying to do this in a way that she can go home and she can put out that home grow, and she can have those plants without having that big electric bill that I have right now that, that forces me to grow indoors. Uh, of course, this time of the year wouldn't be too easy, but, but at the same point, uh, make it affordable to everyone, make it available to everyone, get enough out there like Brian said, because when you take 30 grams of, of bud, you break that down with the oils and you only get four to five grams of actual usable medicine out of that 30 grams of cannabis. So if I've only got a limited amount of cannabis, I can't even get there. It, for, it takes me yeah. a pound of marijuana to make two months worth of medicine. Okay, so if you can't, or if anybody who uses medicinal marijuana can't get enough from a dispensary that's controlled by the Department of Public to, Safety, yeah. then what are you gonna do? Go to the black market. Black market. That's why we need legalization. That's where, well, but. You, you've got six. The legalization, the, this legalization bill has more effect on the medical community right. than mm -hmm. anything. It takes away this our rights. This, it takes away our right to make medicine, mm -hmm. and it takes away well, the that's, nonprofit. That, that's, that's it takes away the nonprofit structure of the right. dispensaries. It changes the corporate structure of the dispensaries. Actually, from, yeah, they propose from a nonprofit to, to go or to a benefit for profit. corporation to a pro for-profit corporation. Yeah. Well, that's, that's a big argument. Well, yeah. should be, there should be. That, a that, that, how, I, I right. don't know what that has to do with legalization. No, or no, but, medical no, you program. guys are totally right. But that's a big argument. Well, there's the other thing is too, and this is this is out in the open. They're they're not hiding it. The dispensaries have parallel corporations running right now for profit yeah. no, and I, they've I been asked. taking a profit off of whatever the dispensary is doing for at least three years I, I, I just got dental insurance last year um, I'm supposed to be happy oh I finally have insurance my dental bill came to $800 I have my copay I said I thought I had insurance yeah right. but if you didn't have it you have to pay 4000 oh I don't have to pay 800 okay I guess I'm happy <laughs> I mean, no I, that's 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 a whole bigger argument 
Well, again, That's we're trying to keep the cost down. We're trying to keep the money local to the communities right. and allow everybody to gain on this. But that's a legitimate argument. I'm saying about the powers to be, it, that's a hard thing to fight. I mean, the medical industry. Well, the government wants the containment and control. They want to be able to con collect their taxes from as few people as possible, inspect as few people as possible. Mm -hmm. And, uh, the, you know, the dispensaries are up and running in a sense, okay? But at the same point, in my personal opinion, okay, and this is my opinion, I don't think they're serving the patients the way they could and the way they should. And yeah. I'm not basing that on my experience because I grow. But I'm basing that as an advocate from the patients that come to me and talk to me about this. I can only say there's one dispensary. I won't say what one, but they happen, they happen to send quite a number of cancer patients to me. And basically, I've got an agreement with them. The people that they legally can't help and can't tell them the truth, they send to me. And it puts me in a rather awkward position, but I can't really say no to these people. Um, and this bill now makes it illegal for most patients to make, the, or not most pa any patient that's using concentrates to make their own medicine. It makes it illegal. No person shall manufacture concentrated marijuana by chemical extraction or chemical synthesis using a solvent. And you can make a tincture any day of the week out of any er other herb with that same solvent. So you tell me why that's a problem. And the other point of the matter I should point out is what Brian was doing, he's not charging anybody a dime. Okay, that man hasn't, hasn't asked anybody for any money at any time, and I know that for a fact. Right, well the whole patent issue also gets into, because um, um, I, forget, I forget what it is, um, the stuff my wife makes, um, it's an old, um, oh God, what's, it, what's that called? When you have a sore throat, it's uh, like an old recipe for, um, Fire cider. Fire cider. <laughs> That's right. Uh, people have been making fire cider for a hundred years. Uh, somebody in Pittsfield the other day, last year, patented the word fire cider. Oh boy. Just yeah, the word, yeah. which is like Pepsi Cola. Yeah. Uh, cola. Yeah. So um, now the woman who was pushing fire cider with videos and making it free for everybody, she can now be sued. Yep. Yep. So I, it, it, this, that's sort of issue. Yeah. Well, we'll there, there should be about. another thing we can point out too is that initially when the dispensaries opened up. They were not allowed to get their seeds or plants. We brought them to them, okay? Now they'd like to sell them back to us, okay? Uh, to people here in Vermont. At, at, but the way the law is, as a patient, we're either allowed to grow or right. we can use a dispensary. Um, so I, since I grow, I can't use a dispensary, but the dispensaries can only get their plants from people like me. Um, so, I mean, we, we've all gone out of our way to help the dispensaries. Right, I mean, right. I mean, I mean, well, in a capitalist even, society, even we can't use them. In a capitalist society, eventually you're going you're gonna to have to come to these crossroads. I mean, that's sort of the... Well, uh, we were, you know, right. the patients were basically separated from the dispensary. If you decided to grow, you didn't have the benefit. And even if you have a crop failure, that means you go without your meds because mm -hmm. there's no other place other than the gray market or parallel. We call it parallel market, the people that are growing in the state, and the black market, the people that are importing from out of the state. And you've got to remember, there's guys that are bringing in through the U.S. Postal Service with, uh, on a regular basis, pounds and pounds and pounds of cannabis, okay? Mm. And oh, yeah, they are. And, and, the, and, the, and um, the, uh, uh, there's other things that are going on, too, where people are, have these huge grows. Not, we're not talking about the small grower. We're talking about the huge grows that are still exporting out of the state. Okay, I don't have specific names, but I've been told a lot of different things because no. I'm an advocate and people talk to me. So I'm being honest about it. We're being honest about it. We're being upfront about it. Uh, and, and again, this is not a, an, a something that's going to, the sky is not going to fall. It, everything's already in place. It, it and points out the fallacy of prohibition. If all of this is going on and creating an underground economy, <coughs> excuse me, right. and people are smoking it and growing it and selling it and buying it, the, you know, this bill, uh, if, if it keeps prohibition in various things such as uh, extracts and so on, people are going to continue to do it. It's just they're going to do it at greater risk. Jeanette White said it in the committee hearing, in the GovOps committee hearing that I was in at one point. She said, well, I'm not going to tell anybody what they can or cannot do in their kitchen. Whether they want to make a right. can of butter, for instance, which wouldn't have any, right. any volatile... Uh, yeah, that, that would be legal. Right. Oh, that would be legal. Yeah, okay, yeah, so that's still legal. That, yeah. But, but, but the whole the whole point of the matter is you're not going to stop people from concentrating something if they want to. Right. Okay. Well, no. The, right. The, but the yeah. reason, the main reason we're having this discussion, the state is having this discussion, is because these growers have been here forever and they haven't gone away. If they'd gone away ten years ago, nobody would be talking about. This. So in Colorado, what is the situation in Colorado? It's legal in Colorado. I think, yes. Cannabis. Now, 
But yeah, they. I'm but actually, that's not by the legislature. What Senator Sears no. did. No, that was no, done it was by, by that ballot was measure. Ballot yeah. measure. Yeah. And in Washington. Yeah. Also, yeah, that's what you're saying. This would be the first time that the actual legislature. A legislature. Right. Yes. This is why it's okay, so yeah. difficult to craft a bill and stick with it, or keep an idea and stick with it. But but the the thing is, it's Senator Sears picked up on the Washington State model more than the Oregon model or the Colorado model, and that's the most severe model. And, and that's what he chose pretty much to go with. Joe Veldon wrote a nice piece on it um, uh, comparing the two. Joe Benning. Joe, Joe Benning. No, Joe Veldon. Oh, Joe Veldon. Joe Veldon's another advocate who's okay. been working in the hearings and that kind of thing. And he's also an experienced guy who's working in Colorado on grows and this kind of a thing. And he compared the two. And, and that's what he did. He picked the most severe one he could um, and, and paralleled it. Or, or he, he modeled after that, let's say that. So let's go back to what, was said, what, caught, what we think about is incremental progress versus what we really think is right or wrong. And we, and right, well if you want to, you Can know. Can I give an example? Yes. Can you focus on, uh, on this right here, this headline right here? It says, pot fetch ends for Vermont canines. Okay, yesterday's issue with the Rutland Herald. W w what does that mean? The, they're not training drug dogs anymore to recognize the scent of marijuana because there is an expectation that marijuana is going to be legal. Now, I think this is highly symbolic because it, it not only, well, it's, it's highly symbolic because it shows how the world could change for the better and the progress that can be made with any kind of legalization, okay? If, if drug dogs aren't being trained to detect uh, marijuana when doing these ridiculous automobile searches, and if cops can't leverage fear and the use of drug dogs to search automobiles if marijuana, or once marijuana becomes legal, that is progress. And to me, the bill, as imperfect as it is, can help make that a reality. If Let's that, go back to the craft beer analogy for one second. It, it's kind of goofy, but it, we had prohibition. Like I said, my grandmother had a still, and she used to give the police officers whiskey. You know, so yeah. They all had a good time. Um, now you have ind independent brewers making amazing beer. <laughs> so there's an outside chance. What he's saying is, okay, right now we might not be that happy, but as things move along. Well, if you could, if you could say that no one was going to be arrested for their home grow in the process of evolving this, then that, that would be something. Okay. But what I would like to know is, do you think jury, I would ask Brad, do you think jury nullification will solve that problem in the future? Because what we're looking at is somebody who's got a couple of plants and all of a sudden they're gonna be arrested and then they're gonna have legal fees and they're gonna have court fees and <laughs> then they're, they're, their life's gonna be turned upside down. Are we, how are we gonna get that person out of trouble? Because they're still gonna be there. They're not going away. We, 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 we set the 100 square foot grow, the 10 by 10, so because we, we talk through channels to people and they said, yeah, we'll come out of the woods for that. Well, most, most prosecutors simply don't want to prosecute marijuana cases, okay? Um, they will send the case to diversion, which means that the person is put on probation and if they, uh, or they, excuse me, they're not put on probation, that's a deferred sentence. They'll get a deferred sentence where the person may plead guilty and then they'll be put on probation and they have to do counseling or whatever and if they successfully fulfill the requirements of their probation, then the record is stricken and uh, it, uh, then there's no conviction at all. Or they get what's called, uh, that's a deferred sentence, or they get court diversion, where they go in front of the diversion board and maybe they have to do counseling or something. That's where the charge is handled in a non-criminal way. And how much cost is the cost of counseling? I had a friend recently who was arrested in Pennsylvania and he came back and he had to go to uh, Brattleboro to the retreat. And they sat him down, they asked him you know, 20, 30 minutes worth of questions, and they said, you're rehabilitated. And he said, wait a minute, I just paid $2,800. <laughs> he said, well, I can have somebody else ask the questions for yeah. you again, but you seem <laughs> yeah. fine to me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, for example, United Counseling Service, th they'll do a lot of this. And they, they're based on a sliding scale. And you know, one of the, uh, one of the things about legalization that, that, that I argue for is that if you have legalization and then you have you know, dispensaries and, and tax revenue, that can go toward treatment of, uh, for more serious substances. I, I would interject uh, one moment. I have money most of the money goes to the state police. Right. One of the uh, which I think is wrong. One of the things. Well, uh, they fine, giving, but that's what the bill and they're, giving, and they're giving 50% of all the civil fines that the police 
recover when they when they do bust yeah. to back to them. But when yeah. one, one of the things that yeah, I would I wanted right to there. see in the bill, yeah. and I would have liked to see in the bill, and I would still like to see in the bill, is that some of this money goes to the medical patients who cannot afford their meds because the insurance companies yeah. are not required to cover them. Yeah. Uh, l let's talk for a minute about part of the bill that that and the the governor had a five point program that he wanted to see if marijuana was legalized. Mm -hmm. One of them is that all these new state troopers would be hired to, well, it's, it's, it's part of the bill, that all these new state troopers would be hired. I heard something, it, yeah. It, this is five right, principles yeah, right there. Yeah, um, to, uh, to do drug enforcement on the highways. The point that I've tried to make to Senator Sears and to the other senators is it ain't necessary. Okay, we have plenty of police officers. Uh, they need to have better training in drug recognition evaluation or the DRE program. But to me anyway, uh, if, if legalization, if, if having adding 18 or 19 new state troopers, all right, to stop people for taillights out or snow on their license plate or other ridiculous stuff. It's 25 stops, totally, it's right? 25. 25. Yeah. If that's the quid pro, quid pro quo for legalizing marijuana, you know, I think we ought to keep things the way they are. Well, that's an unfunded but, but, mandate that, yeah. that, that brings us into that $2 million that they've got to come up with to start this program now because of this bill, the way it's written. See, now we are in agreement. Uh-oh. This is a make a mistake. <laughs> You've come around to my point of view, Brian. Uh -oh. <laughs> oh, let's go smoke a fatty. <laughs> right. i got to go um, to court this afternoon. Okay. <laughs> so, um, oh, I, I think one point that, that we wanted to make was that the growers are there. They've been there. They're not going to go away. Right. right. Um, it it would be nice to bring them into into the market. I mean, here's the five points of the governors: keeping marijuana and other drugs out of the hands of youth. This bill does that. Any legalization bill should do that. Creating a regulated marijuana market that shifts demand away from the illegal market and the inherent public health and safety risk associated with the illegal market. I'm not sure what that public health and safety risk is because I'm yet aware of somebody who's gotten sick from marijuana. I believe there hasn't been a case yet. There was an emergency room doctor who testified in front of Senate Judiciary mm. when they had the hearing over in uh, Springfield. And it, his remarks were, were a front page of uh, uh, the B section of the Herald the following day. In 35 years of emergency room practice, he never had to deal with a marijuana overdose. I, I listened to him say that. I was there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how this bill shifts demand away from an illegal market. If it's going to the dispensaries, the mm -hmm. dispensaries right now are at three hundred and eighty-five dollars an ounce to four twenty. Yeah. To four twenty. Now add a twenty percent tax to that. And I don't 25. know. How, <laughs> well, I think both sides of this argument. I, I don't know how that's going to undercut the black market. Both which sides is less. Both sides of this argument are very strong. Which is, I'm, I'm personally, I don't like the idea of big corporations taking over. Um, until they, they now cannabis is illegal until people can make a lot of money off it. Now there's something yeah. they can make money off it. So it's a very simple thing to follow. There's nothing, no secret to it. Sure. On the other hand, like I said, now we're making fantastic beers. <laughs> so. Progress is progress. Allow people to grow their own, for God's sake. Yeah, yeah. And, I mean, and, that, and, just, that and, would and solve so that, many that, problems. It, yeah. That would solve all the problems. Right. Right. Exactly. It, it would, uh, to be honest, yeah. I mean, we we have it. There's this. We had talked about it. I mean, we had a thing where everyone got a. T if you bought them in hundred square foot increments, you figure out what each one yeah. can produce roughly. Yeah. And now you know what someone should have, right. whether it's a pound or two pounds. Yeah. And they and buy tax stamps. And guess what? Yeah. People are going to grow their own. Whether it's legal or illegal, they're just going to do it inside, yeah. okay, and uh, you know, or out, so the, or out in the woods. And again, right. from a an e from an ecological standpoint, it's much better to get these people out of the woods. Well, and if it's yeah. growing uh, out uh, in the why, woods, why, why is it better to get them out of the woods? From well, ecology? you've got somebody out there growing clandestinely, and they're throwing fertilizer down somewhere in a swamp. You don't want that. You want it up into your into your garden, and you want to be able to control right. anything like that. Um, uh, plus, uh, I understand that some people are particularly protective of their grows. Yeah. And, and it's not unheard of for young kids, kids 14, 15, 
to be out running around through the woods oh. looking for illegal oh, marijuana. Yeah. Yeah. Right. We, and, and we, we were teenagers once, right? Right. We had, hey, so-and-so has yeah. marijuana. Right. You know, and, 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 and not to say that, you know, and, and it would, there would be less people trying to steal it as well. Um, I've been robbed. I had the state police come in and investigate. Okay, it was teenagers. We know it. Right. Okay, um, but uh, you can't you can't prove it after they smoked it. Okay, and and the point of the matter is, if we lower the price, if we can get everybody growing, if everybody's not buying it, you've got more money in the economy. For if somebody comes home with their paycheck and they're not buying it, they're growing it. They're growing it for what twenty five fifty dollars an ounce instead of that's the total cost to grow it at least outdoors. And, and instead of having to pay 253 or four or five or whatever it is an ounce. You've also got your out-of-state dealers that come into the ski areas and each year they go up and they rent themselves a nice condo and they go skiing all day and sell their pot all night. Okay, that tax money's going right out of the state and that'll continue with this bill because there's still gonna be more of a demand than there is gonna be a supply. Another part of this was strengthening law enforcement's capacity to improve the response to impaired drivers under the influence of marijuana or other drugs. This one baffles me. Um, give me a moment here. Because this bill makes it legal for bong buses. Basically, people will be driving around as long as the driver's not smoking, everybody else can be. Mm, no. Yes. It's a, no, because uh, if I beg your pardon. you can't, uh, <clears throat> in, in an. Uh, a bus is one thing, okay? People can drink on a bus, all right? You can't drink in an automobile. Yes, you can, in the, according to this bill. Read it, let, read, please let, find please let me find it. Give me one moment. Okay. Yeah. Uh, nobody was more surprised than I we, we yeah. are, <laughs> <laughs> let me, While he's looking for that, yeah, we, while, he's lo while he's looking for that, um, unfortunately, it's now as easy to uh, prosecute or investigate somebody for driving under the influence of marijuana. There you go, Brad. Check it out. Except as provided in subsection C, a passenger shall not. Now, here's subsection C. Uh, may contain an open open, open container, container or yeah. a marijuana. Same thing. They, uh, they for the transportation per, or in living quarters of a mobile mortar mortal mortar mobile home mobile home get their mortar motor coach. But yeah. so you're going to have rolling used, used primarily for the transportation of persons. That's yep. any limousine. Yep. That's any Uber vehicle. Yep. Yep. And that's my, me. Yep. If you say, I'll give you 10 bucks for gas and okay. take me to White River Junction. Okay. Now, if this bill passes, I'm going to take 60 of my friends and we're getting on the trailways <laughs> bust them up here <laughs> with a bunch of bombs. <laughs> now, how does that address? I, it's absurd. It's I absurd. understand. Well, this yeah. bill is absurd. But uh, we're going to try and change it. This is the idea. Well, this is what we're I was told that this to. bill was written while they were okay. while he was watching football, drinking beer. Well, yeah. he said that. Okay. actually. that quote. That's a quote from Dick. That's okay, a quote, okay. Really? That's a quote, quote from Dick Sears. But, but to, okay. get, to get back in the trenches, yeah. how how do you work? Like, when's this, when's this going to be filed to the legislature? When's this going to happen? How much time do you have? What's well, well, this is, this whole, this is in front of Commerce right no, now. No, it's right? well, no, it hasn't gotten out of finance yeah, unless they voted on it today because yeah. they delayed the vote one yeah. more time. Yeah. So it's still in the Finance Committee, and they were trying to come up with two million to, to start yeah. the to start the ball rolling because they've got to have all these. They want to, have, according to this they, bill, we need all hire, all that. They've got to hire twelve. Because they want to stay true. They want to hire. They right. Well, they, they want to hire the troopers. They want all the prevention going before they've made a buck. Okay. So that brings up. Can I just jump in right here? Sure. The point that I made to Senator Sears is the law, I mean, there are many things in this bill that personify the law of unintended consequences. If you're gonna hire 12 or 20 new state troopers, you're gonna have to hire more prosecutors, more judges, more public defenders. More cars. More police cars, more equipment, and everything. It's just, it's, it's ridiculous, it's absurd. We are over-policed in Vermont as it is. Hiring 20 new state troopers at great expense and uh, loss to privacy rights of us as Vermonters, it ain't worth it, it really isn't. And it's not necessary, just better train the troopers that we have in the drug recognition evaluation for prosecution of uh, impaired drivers. And there, I have, uh, my nephew's in-laws were just out from Colorado, they've lived there for 20 years. My sister asked them, she said, have you seen any difference since, it be, since marijuana became legal in Colorado? He said the only thing that you really notice is the roads are a little better. Um, that oh, the tax money for the roads. Yeah, but the, nothing has changed. I mean, nothing is going to change here, whether it's legalized or whether it's illegal, other than the judicial Actually, system. we've seen reports from Colorado of uh, DUIs going down, 
and uh, fatalities going down from car crashes. So yep. again, people will drink less if the, I in many cases. Okay, okay but to go back to the bill, if we're, quote, unhappy with the bill and you want to try to reshape it, what's the protocol? What's the time Well, frame? they're what's in finance right now, and they're going to have to go. There's another committee that's going to come through in the Senate, and then they're going to either, they're going to, it's either going to fail in that committee or it's going to the full Senate. And if it fails, what happens at that point? If it, they can, they can throw it forward if they want to, and they can give it a, a failing grade and throw it forward to the whole Senate for discussion, or they can kill it right there. Um, I know that uh, what I've heard, uh, read, is that the senators that are in that final administrative committee, I believe it is. Uh, administrative and finance? Uh, no, fin it's separate from finance, because yeah. finance has got it right now. But um, the majority of them are not in favor uh, of the of legalization at this well, time. Not that they, they don't even care about the particulars of the bill. The whole concept of legalizing. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. In that case, so it, you know, it, it may not get to the house. If it does get to the house, that's a whole different game. But again, we if we stress the points that we're trying to stress now, perhaps we can get change. But we had a really nice bill in what uh, Senator White. I have to give Senator White and Senator Benning a lot of credit for sticking their necks out on this. And they really did follow through with us. Um, and and uh, so, so when it went through judiciary and it got changed uh, by Senator uh, uh, Sears, um, uh, we're hoping that we can bring it back in the other direction. So in a certain sense, if this bill does fail, you wouldn't be that disappointed. I'd be ecstatic. Yeah, yeah, at this time, at, at Brad's not, and there's a number of you, other you people. You want this to, su to succeed. I want it to move forward. I think it, it, it would be uh, enormous social progress. Uh, Keith Clark, who's uh, Wyndham County uh, sure. Sheriff, testified in favor of legalization. He said that the time has come for it. In fact, I, I wrote him a letter just right. the other day thanking him for, for saying that. He said he would be as proud the day Vermont legalizes marijuana as when he marched his daughter down the aisle to marry her partner, her same-sex partner. It, and it, I, it, I mean, that's just, it's hearings, just an example the, of progress. At the hearings, when the drug task force testified, they said last year they had two marijuana arrests. That's all the drug task force. And, and they said they fell on those. They, they, well, they, like they, you said, mo most police officers probably just aren't that, you know, they, they it, maybe it, on the it, Well, it's actually, in, in decrim, it was a cash positive situation for the state. I believe yes. over 100K, 130K, yes. something yeah. like that came into the state, and they didn't have any judiciary because yeah. all they were doing is writing tickets and people yeah. were sending in the money. Yeah. That's So that's where we're at. We're looking at spending a lot of money on these police officers and all this set up to protect kids uh, when the situation is already in play, when the growers are already here, all we need to do is let Vermonters have the opportunity to grow this plant without criminal penalty. If you want to give civil, civil penalties like we had in the original bill for somebody growing uh, 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 way too much outside this, I'm, I have no problem with that because I think if you can stay within your 500 square foot grow or your 100 square foot or if you want to buy that additional 100 square foot to the free grow that any home grower would get and pay that dollar a square foot, then that would fund this program. It would make it more, uh, more, more palatable to those who don't want to spend the money. But if we're going to be left with a deficit before we even legalized in 2018, the problem is downrange. Maine, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, and Connecticut will probably have legalized before we do. Maine will legalize. We would uh, like uh, we, now, we, not with not with that uh, governor. That that <laughs> that Tea Party governor Paul LePage is a it's wing right, that. I, I understand that, but, yeah. it's, 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 but he it's made fine. he made a good point about heroin. I mean, he, he's the long, wrong language, yeah. obviously. Yeah. But the, he knows the heroin issue is a big deal. Again, we have to uh, separate no, that from it, this plan. No, right. But yeah. I'm just saying you make he's a wing that governor. But yeah. yeah. But they th 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 someone like that lumps marijuana, heroin, everything together in the same. Okay, to go back yeah. to independent yeah. growers, uh, I use a, uh, my, naive, my naive way, regulation. How do you regulate, um, quote, um, cannabis that we know is not tainted or that's healthy? Well, w you know, it's like anything else. If you're going to grow yourself some food, you don't want to put anything that you wouldn't want to eat. Me personally, okay? but that's right. my opinion. And if I'm a small farmer and I'm serving my local community and my friends, okay, why would I want to put anything that wasn't? I totally agree. Okay? But, but and, and you will taste it. Okay, if you smoke marijuana, which you probably have, and I'm assuming you haven't. Once. And once, once, okay. All right. I, no, th wait, what did Bill Clinton say? Yeah. I, I, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't <laughs> hear <him. laughs> no, I was actually given a bag once when I was a teenager, and, and I, I had lived in an apartment. I, I didn't want to hide it from my mother, so I gave it to somebody. I said, hey, you're really cool, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> but that's, that's, that's the, the thing is this. If, if you've ever smoked it, you know if there's anything in it. For instance, if there were still chemicals in it and it wasn't cleared when somebody grew it, it's going to crackle. It could even spark a little, you know, it, or it might taste bad or wouldn't taste right. 
Okay, if it, anybody leaves a chemical fertilizer okay, so in a tomato. The, you let the independent marketplace take care of that as opposed to making sure that it's, quote. Absolutely, it's not don't worry about it, any oversight. You know, and Nobody's if, well, ever gotten sick from it yet. Oh, no, I'm yeah. just throwing yeah. this out. I don't know. Quat in Mexico. It's easier to <laughs> self-titrate. Uh, with with smoked cannabis than it is with alcohol. What when do you, you mean? S explain self titrate. Self titrate. Right? I'm sorry. Self, it's a medical term for basically you know when you've had enough. Okay. You you smoke a little bit. You feel great. And you stop. Okay. With alcohol, sometimes people go a little too far. Right. And you're not going to find that with a cannabis user. You're going to find them, that that's fine with me. Okay. And especially if they don't have to hide it and and smoke right. it all at once or something right. like that. But the whole thing is. We pride ourselves as as patients on growing a clean, beautiful product for ourselves. Okay, uh, we're, we're gonna, we're, I guess total we got five minutes to go. Okay, and these guys talk for an hour before I even showed up, and they're gonna talk. <laughs> 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 this is pretty bad, but okay. Well, we thank you for the opportunity the, the, today. The so-called final statements. We'll just go down the line, if you want. I'm I'm just gonna say to the senators that are out there, please give consideration to reinstating what uh, Jeanette White and Joe Benning put in the original S two four one. Please give us home grow for all and consider giving uh, uh, unlimited or an extended number of licenses beyond the ones that are currently in Dick Sears' bill. This is Senator Sears S241, not White Benning. Please bring it back to that. All right. We in the state of Vermont are on the precipice of history, legalizing marijuana. We would be the first state in the union to do so, and that would be enormous. Even a bill in an imperfect form is better than no bill at all. It would be a triumph of light over darkness, I think, because of the efforts of the prohibitionists and the flat earthers and the people with the tin, the uh, tin foil hats who say that marijuana is bad and people are going to drop in the street. We need legalization. People are going to buy, smoke, and grow marijuana, whether it's legal or not. We might as well make it legal. We could generate sorely needed tax revenue for the state and it would be an enormous social benefit. We need legalization this year. I'm fully in agreement with what everybody else says. I just feel we should have a bill that's responsible and addresses the issues in Vermont. Okay, all right. I, I guess um, everybody's made their statements, they made their pleas. Um, I have no final wrap up personally. Um, what can, uh, what can listeners do if they uh, are interested in legalization? What, what can listeners do? With Contact that? your senators. Contact Senator Sears, Senator Campion, who I know supports legalization. Uh, contact the senators on the, uh, uh, on the fi not finance, administrative rules. Uh, all the senators, all your legislators, yeah. your House right. members, tell them what you want. Please tell them. Because <sighs> you think this, this will, your gut feeling is this, will not, this is not going to pass. We don't know at this point. It's been so fluid. I, I wouldn't make a prediction at this point. Again, we're trying to steer the ship into port in a way that's good for all Vermonters, not just a few. And if the body politic, you know, if enough people want to, on your quote, your side, meaning the bill is not good enough, you think that can have an impact? Yes. I believe it, <laughs> it already has, and it will continue to do so if necessary. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks for having thanks, us. Thanks for the statements.